Rebuilding a Bernac Vulcan model steam engine toy, part 19. Checking the dimensions of the original flywheel so that I can turn a new one to the same size. Looking at the water gauge, it is obvious that it is in need of boiler bushes. Choosing the diameter of steel for the crankshaft. This is an original Bernat Vulcan that hasn't been modified. My Super Vulcan will be quite different to this one. The water gauge is entirely different, the boiler is going to be entirely different, and the crankshaft will be made from steel and run in phosphor bronze bearings. The main problem with these Bernac Vulcan steam engines is the crankshaft. It's made from brass, it's very thin, very weak and bends easily. My Bernac Vulcan will not suffer from this problem. The measurement on the caliper is the thickness of the centre boss of the flywheel. These thou to metric numbers always confuse me. Maths was never my strong point at school. By holding the caliper against the steel rule, I come up with this measurement. The flywheel diameter is two and a quarter inches and the centre boss is nine sixteenths thick. What about the crankshaft? I was going to use this piece of stainless steel, but I decided that it was too small. This is five thirty seconds of an inch in diameter and I'm going to use three sixteenths. I will make a new crankweb out of a piece of phosphor bronze that will look just about the same as this. This is the plan anyway, but it is subject to change if anything goes spectacularly wrong. For about a millisecond, I thought about using mammoth parts, but I quickly dismissed this. The Meccano pulley wheel was what was on this engine when I bought it. About as much use as a chocolate teapot. Joining the collection of parts on the bench is the original steam inlet pipe that I'm going to use, but I'm not going to use the nut that's with it. Instead, I'm going to use commercial fittings and silver solder, a coned union onto the existing pipe. Here's the arrangement in close-up that I'm going to use. A commercial double union, a union nut, and a coned union adapter to accommodate the one-eighth pipe that currently connects to the engine. And here it is. The original arrangement was that the pipe itself fitted into a long union nut which functioned as a gland and required packing. I'm going to do away with that. In this clip, I've fitted the coned union, the union nut, and the adapter into the top of the boiler, not forgetting to leave room for a copper washer. What I need to do next is cut the pipe to size, and as you can see, quite a bit needs cutting off the end of it. Then I will silver solder it into the coned union, and it won't look like this. Yesterday, I had my first session of prostate radiotherapy, number one of five. So far, so good, and I feel okay. I don't think it's wise to do any heavy duty lifting or moving anything about, but hopefully I will be able to continue with the video production. In the shot at the moment is the original Bernac Vulcan as well. You can see how different the union nut is. I chopped off the end of the piece of pipe using my bandsaw and now it looks like this. I'm going to silver solder it and before I do that, it needs thoroughly cleaning in the area that I'll be soldering. As you can see, the cleaned end is much shinier than the other end. Into the outer part of the workshop now for a bit of silver soldering. The job begins by coating the area with some silver solder flux. This is easy flow number two. From a video point of view, I made a mistake here. The part should have been turned around the other way. Because if you watch, you'll notice that the silver solder goes through the flame and gets too hot too quickly and runs a little bit further than I wanted it to. The position of the viewing screen of the video camera means that the camera always has to be at the right hand side. As you can see from the previous clip, you do need quite a lot of heat for silver solder. Once it had cooled to black, I quenched it. That removes most of the scale, and here I'm applying some abrasive wax to the polishing spindle and cleaning up the pipe. I could of course put it in the acid bath, but to save time I'm doing it this way. Why am I not wearing gloves? Because I don't wear gloves in the workshop. I finish off the cleaning with some Brasso wadding, but there was one difficult part to get to, so I used a very fine grip flapper wheel for this, fitted into my Proxon motor tool. Here's a piece of pipe fitted to the union at the top of the boiler and into the engine. And this clip shows the general layout of what it's going to look like when it's finished. I want to check the alignment of the holes in the boiler and make sure that they match the engine. 
and the good news is, yes, they do. The combination of my cardboard template and my calibrated eye seemed to do the trick. In a previous episode, I drilled and threaded the boiler to accept the 3 16 by 40 threads on the water gauge. But I am going to make some bushes so the water gauge will not have to screw directly into the boiler barrel. The speed of a burnout Vulcan is regulated by a 4BA bolt that partially blocks up the exhaust. I wasn't sure what to do about this, and I was looking in a box with hand wheels and bits and pieces to make up a special fitting. And whilst doing this, believe it or not, I found a genuine Burnack Vulcan valve. I've no idea whatsoever where this came from, it was just sat in the box. I don't want to lose this part, so I'm screwing it into the block at the top of the engine. I really do not know how a Burnack Vulcan regulator valve got into that box. Here it is and it's looking good. I was going to use a small hand wheel but I like this. Just to show that I haven't taken this regulator valve from the other Burnack Vulcan, I'm panning across to it and as you can see there's one in this also. I'm quite enjoying creating this Super Vulcan. It's a simple and interesting job. And that's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.